challenge predictions are closing very soon. Uh, just FYI. If you're not listening to RUI, it's an easy thing to, it's an easy pitfall is to not listen to RUI. But anyway, welcome once again to the Air Mac Carry, Carry Me Tournament 1, number 1, whatever. On the left hand side we've got Null Cool and Killer, we have Swift Demise. Uh, going ahead, splitting up. In the meanwhile, we see the Carbon team in the bottom right, Deathbot123 and Singe Slayer, making up Pink Slime, going ahead and nullifying this pose together. Uh, they're going to be just a little bit faster again. It seems that the concentrated mech fire does give you an overall faster start. Um, so no cool already he's trying to set up some dillos to try and uh, get rid of this post but getting a couple of his tanks already taken down uh, those casualties do stack up my friends and so meanwhile carbon team already getting a good capture just throwing a couple of sams into this base Singe Slayer almost getting killed but fortunately knows that you can heal by tapping Q and just sits there and regenerates his health. Now Delphbot as a Neo is gonna run in cloaked, drop a few mines out here uh, completely scouted. Everyone knows that these mines are here so the question is will they forget about them or are they going to do anything about those mines because that can be a lot of dead tanks later if they don't take any action. Now we are seeing no helix, oh sorry, Cinch Lair is a helix but only one helix on both teams and no warthogs so a little bit different mech balance here now killer is a very strong unit killing mech that bomber um, with an osprey which could potentially heal him so null, null cool osprey is basically the healing mech and is gonna gonna be able to keep both killer and all of his vehicles topped off now it's interesting <laughs> deathbot trying to take out the repair units first now they drop these ratchets down not to really top off the tanks, more in an effort to get rid of the mines. Deathbot making excellent use of that dodge. No way they can take him down when he's that fast. Even though there were missiles flying from every direction. So Cinch Slayer, no cool. Having a little bit of a battle here. Red team thinking about moving up. They keep trying to leapfrog these Dillos up, but Dillos are very weak armor tanks. They're basically a glass cannon, but they're a little bit faster. Uh, they did receive a recent buff to their overall health. If he's not careful, he's going to start losing those. Now, Singe Slayer trying to just snipe in with a couple missiles, do a little bit of harass, just to keep that Osprey from standing still and having fun. But the red team does have generators. What those do is they will give you extra energy whenever you're standing next to them. Uh, Heavy Mine put up way too late, but red team's not going to see it, so eventually it is going to activate. Since we're trying to take out that Osprey, he's had enough of that garbage, but... Whew! The Jukes! Uh, Deathbot, once again, just avoiding death by the skin of his teeth. So we've got now what you can call a traditional mid-fight. Um, but Red has the initiative. They haven't put infantry in this post quite yet, but now, okay, that's theirs. Carbon trying to set up a big wall of tanks. Now they've got a healthy mix of Gemini, Longhorn, Seekers couple of heavy ratchets so they're going to be able to push into this no problem these dillos are not going to stand up against this tank wall so right now carbon pretty much has the advantage red team's tanks are also on the follow command showing their butts to to the carbon forces taking extra damage and getting sniped out as well as null cool getting taken down that means no osprey no healing so this is the grand opportunity for carbon team to reposition and do a little bit more damage but they're not really going to capitalize on a whole lot right now they'd rather do the long war now unfortunately the outposts themselves give you a lot of income so that's a thousand extra energy here that's 80 extra credits right here that's per per tick yeah, maybe that's Maybe that's per minute. I'm not sure. Either way, 80 credits per every five seconds is a decent chunk of change. Now, you do have lockboxes on this map. You've got a neutral lockbox here. You've got a neutral lockbox here. And now they just kind of grow, and you've got more lockboxes. Uh, you can pick those up. You can pick those up and sell those for extra cash on a lot of these maps. Duel is one of those maps. Neither team really capitalizing on that. But no cool going ahead, trying to drop in behind... Do a quick neutralize. He realizes that there's this stalemate going on and is trying to take advantage of how Carbon's team attention is all focused on that middle outpost. Deathbot going to try and steal some cash. Sinchlayer, meanwhile, is going to go for it. 
They've got the composition, they've got the numbers, but they don't really have the position. These tanks are filtering in single file versus this big perpendicular wall of cannons. So he's just going to sacrifice all this up upkeep. Really, you need the Neo in there putting stasis on these, and he needs to stop these tanks because they're going to get out of position. Really, he should have pushed in, put his tanks on hold as they approach within firing range because then they can still keep shooting out. Osprey going ahead, applying an overshield and healing up all of these tanks. So Carbon just sacrificed their entire army for virtually no benefit. And their back right post is still neutral. So not looking pretty. They've also lost their front post as well. Uh, really, when you are trying to do a push like that, you need to do a couple of things. You need to uh, invest in distraction. You need to drop lighter units behind. You need to stop your units before they expose their rear flank to the open cannon. So... Uh, Carbon did have the overall net fire superiority, but they just, with a poor positioning of the units uh, and just going on a straight capture command, that R command, they were unable to really do a whole lot of damage with it. Noko cool, going to get taken out over his post, because when you capture a newly, new outpost, it does start at zero energy, so it had nothing to top him off with. So Singe Slayer just taking advantage of that, giving him a couple missiles to the face. It's a beautiful thing to see anyone getting snipe over their post. They think they're such so comfortable, but when really, they're not. So, Deathbot, with that Neo Cloak, is going to try and neutralize that left outpost, pulling his units out before Killer has a chance to snipe those. Uh, Nulkul, meanwhile, trying to do the same thing to the Carbon team, dropping a Seeker, a couple of Gemini. Little bit of miss micro, but it's working out. Uh, Deathbot going ahead, ticking the fort a little bit, but because you have a bomber and these are on hold command, the tanks are not even looking at the fort. So, almost no damage done, and one lunchbox will pop that right off. Lunchbox, a unit that when socketed is going to add an overshield to that fort. So, Carbon Team has stabilized. They're not going to lose this game right away, but they still, the initiative is on Red Team. It is their game to throw here. Uh, with that swift demise, Killer taking out Deathbot again. And so this base will go neutral. Uh, Red Team taking yet another outpost. And with Deathbot down, there's really not a whole lot of ability to respond here. They're trying to crank out some tanks, but at this point, they're going to find themselves muscled out of upkeep. You've got 124 max total on the red team versus 44 on the carbon team. Red is able to field an army three times larger than what carbon is even able to put out. So if red just sits still, uh, they are going to completely overpower carbon, but they don't want to waste no time. They're going ahead. They're pushing in with Goliaths and Armadillos and Longhorns. Why not every kind of tank while we're at it? Throw in some Gemini uh, with jumpers behind. So this base will probably go neutral. You've also got the Osprey that is not healing those thick tanks. That's normally what you'd expect is the Osprey to jump in. You've got those Goliaths. They've got a really high HP pool. They've got 3,600 hit points versus a Longhorn. It's got more than three times... Uh, the hit points so normally with an Osprey it's very very hard to pick off these denser units like Goliaths or Devastators. Deathbot might get taken out here if he's not careful but he does stealth away. So Killer going ahead pushing the rest of the units he smells blood in the air going to go ahead and finish this with all of his Goliaths not communicating very well with Nullcool but he does seem to get the idea and push in as well. So you've got jumpers, tanks, lions, tigers, bears. Oh my. As the carbon fort just cannot withstand firepower of that sort of magnitude. Swift Demise taking this game over Pink Slime with a more traditional approach. But anyway, GG, indeed. We will be proceeding on to Bracket 4. As we continue on, there's your stats. If anyone does anyone actually care about stats, I, I know I probably don't. So let's proceed.